Hi, chess fans. How are you? Uh, in this video, we are going to look at one of the coolest players from the 18th century, Harry Pillsbury. Um, what made Pillsbury so cool? Well, he was kind of like an aggressive player, kind of like the, the old school version of like Fischer, Kasparov, uh, guys like that. Um, he definitely provided a sharp contrast to guys like Lasker, Steinitz, who, in my opinion, were a little more positionally based. Uh, this was a tournament called Hastings in 1895, and this is when Tarash basically, I'm sorry, Nel P Pillsbury burst onto the scene. He was not well known at all, but he won the tournament, and he had some remarkable games in the process, and so I'd like to go over some of those. The first game is his round two game against Tarash. Pillsbury actually lost his round one game to Chigorin in a kind of crazy King's Gambit. But this game is really interesting. So he's playing one of the best players in the world. And at this moment, first, think about some plans for white. Think about what you might do. Um, these pawns are coming. And they're going to create some kind of attack on the queen side for black. It's very hard to stop them. Black has a four and three majority on the queen side. Actually, it's almost like what's well, three on two and these pawns are just sitting there. However, on the king side, white has more pawns. So usually that would mean that because black's attacking on the queen side, white should try to do something on the king side. And what Pillsbury did here is actually named after him. This maneuver is named after Pillsbury. Knight to e5. And the idea is after b5, f4. This is actually called the Pillsbury attack. And so it's kind of cool to know uh, the history of that. And that the, all these 95 f4 stuff, Kramnik does this a lot. I mean, all modern players know this idea. It was sort of invented by Pillsbury. So rook e8, queen f3. And now what's cool here is white makes some very consistent attacking moves. Like when I was looking at this game, I was like, I don't know, man. It just doesn't look like the attack works. I kept trying to like hedge and, and defend on the queen side, or, or not just go all out. But Pillsbury really went for it in this game. He traded bishops here. He took this knight, queen to g3. Now knight to g4. Now we're threatening knight takes f6. f5. Queen to d7. And now he goes rook f1 to defend that pawn. So. Eventually, these pawns are going to make themselves known, but white is just going to slowly try to build something on the king side. Rook d8 was played. Rook to f4, with some ideas of potentially rook lifting or going to g4. Queen to h4, and you see his pieces are just slowly creeping more and more towards the king side. Although still, when I was looking at the game, I didn't see a significant threat. Rook to d8, and now it's the first time he kind of hedges his bets. He goes to c3 instead of g3. Um, so it's kind of going to the other side of the board. Bishop d5, knight to f2. Uh, what's the idea of knight f2? Perhaps to start pushing this pawn. Although after queen c6, he doesn't do that. He just goes rook to f1, slowly maneuvering the rook over the king side. b4, knight back to e2. Now queen a4. So black is like, enough of this. I don't even know what you're trying to do, Pillsbury. I'm just going to start taking some of your pawns. Uh, so the question now, well, oh, actually, first he goes knight to g4 with ideas if queen takes a2, knight takes f6. Pawn takes, queen takes, and if rook g7, it looks like rook g4 is a winning move because if rook e7, we can take the knight. So black cannot quite get greedy and take the a pawn just yet. Instead, he played knight to d7. And now I'd like you to find a move for white. Pause your video. Try to figure out how you would continue here, how to play consistent, consistently. So, okay, white could play defensively with knight to c1. Just defend the a pawn. Pillsbury plays a much more aggressive move. Rook to f2. Now, that doesn't look aggressive. It looks like he's just retreating. However, his idea is that this knight on f4 is quite menacing. So after rook to f2, black played king to g8, 
And now white probably should have played knight to f4. And after bishop f7, d5. This would have been nice for white, because we're also threatening d6, trapping the rook. Knight e6 is an idea, and d6, trapping the rook. And it's hard for black to stop both of those. So that was a bit of a mistake on Pillsbury's part. He should have went for that. Instead, he played, he, he played the inconsistent knight c1. And after c3, b3, queen c6, suddenly black is now back in the ballgame. White's having a hard time generating an attack, and we have this beautiful pawn on c3. So white went h3, black starts pushing these pawns some more, a5, very logical. Knight h2, a4, g4, he's going for it. Black takes, white takes, and now he's going for it some more. Rook a8, he's going to infiltrate on the queen side. In the meantime, what is white going to do about it? After rook to a3, sorry, rook to a8, white went g5, and black continued and went rook to a3. Uh, better was probably take and maybe queen f6, try to trade queens, and this looks pretty good for, pretty decent for black, honestly. This, this pawns are pretty strong on c3, but Tarash was not uh, patient. He just immediately wanted to win that g-pawn. So after rook a3, white played knight to g4, increasing the pressure, and black's like, whatever, man, I'll take it. And white again, increasing the pressure. Now we have ideas against this king, because this g7 pawn can be pinned in a lot of variations. So black moved the king over one step. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. He took the bishop. And now rook takes b3. So, it's white to move here. And this is basically the key part of the puzzle. I would like, and this is a tough game. Not all the games are going to be this complicated and tough. But my key question to you guys is, how should white continue? And most importantly, how do you evaluate the resulting position? Is white better? Is it even? Is black better? So try, try to work it out. It may take a while. It's not the most obvious position ever. All right, so I'm going to show the answers now. Knight to h6 is the logical first move. And then after rook g7, the only real defense to rook g8 checkmate, white takes it, black takes it, and white goes queen to g3. Now, black if black goes king to f8, queen g8 followed by queen takes rook is pretty acceptable for white. I mean, we're up a rook, so <laughs> that's an understatement. However, after king takes h6, the question is now, what should be the result? We're down a piece. It looks like, however, we can make a draw. Rook to f4, and if rook to b1, king up, rook to b2, king back, and basically a perpetual. The only thing is we cannot bring the king too close, because anytime we go to e2, queen c4 will lead to checkmate. So it basically looks like it's going to be a draw. Rook f4, uh, rook b1, it just looks like white can just, just save the game, and black can just save the game. However, in this position, white is winning, with a, a very surprising and subtle little move. King to h1. Very beautiful move by Pillsbury. And the, the point is simple. What are you going to do about rook g1 and queen h4? And the answer is there's nothing you can do. Uh, if, if c2, rook here, queen, checkmate. And the more you look at it, there's no way to stop rook g1 and queen h4. Black ended up trying queen to d5. Sorry, he didn't go c2. He tried queen to d5. Rook to g1, queen takes f5, check, and check. And now black's only move is to give away the queen. Queen to d6, king h5, queen takes d7, and white is basically winning here. These pawns are not fast enough. 
Uh, for some sicko reason, uh, Tarash played c2, allowing queen takes h7 checkmate. A uh, better attempt might have been rook b1, but this is not. It's not really uh, acceptable for black. I mean, white is still winning after like queen e6, king g7, even d5, because you're not threatening c2 because of queen to e5 check. So white would have still had a winning position. Now, this was a pretty long video. I apologize if you if you like them shorter. Uh, I just had to show two ideas here. Number one, this idea in the opening of knight to e5 and f4, because it is called the Pillsbury attack. I thought it's important to know that and to see him do it for basically the first time in a serious tournament. Uh, the second thing, first I also wanted to show like kind of how he slowly maneuvers all his pieces to the king's side. Uh, admittedly, I think black was better at times in this game. These pawns were very strong. But Tarash got a little hasty and just didn't respect White's attack very much. And in the end, it cost him. As, as White had this beautiful little maneuver where it looks like it's going to be a draw, but then all of a sudden, this very nice move, king to h1. So slow, but so deadly. And that's it. So Pillsbury got a major scalp with this win, and he is now 1-1 one one in the tournament. And it's like a long-ass tournament. It's like 20 rounds or something. So... There's a bunch of interesting games from this event that I will be presenting to you. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.